All right, well, uh, welcome. It's lovely to see you, and uh, to those watching online, welcome as well. There are a few things just to say initially, because uh, obviously many of you will have seen the announcement last night. Delayed somewhat, I think, um, but um, what does that mean for us? Uh, as uh, I was reading last night in terms of the guidance, uh, for the next four weeks, we are not allowed to do public worship, but we can open for private prayer. Uh, which we have done before, if you remember. And uh, what we'll do is both on Wednesday morning from 9 till 11, and then on Sunday morning, 9.30 to 11.30, the church will be open. There will be someone here. Here, I'll normally be here or Mark, and we'll have uh, some prayers on the screen. You can come in for a short time and pray and just have some time with the Lord and then rotate out when you are... Um, uh, when you finish. So that's what's happening over the next four weeks. I've just seen two very special people come in in the back. Uh, can I do this? Yes. yes. So um, Tasha and Ruben just got engaged. <laughs> that's great. Lovely to have you and uh, brilliant that um, they're here and uh, do. Um, we wish them all the best and uh, Great to have that news. A um, couple of other things to uh, review on and also to um, remind you of. Uh, obviously, um, this is the kind of Halloween All Saints weekend. And we have been, um, been thinking quite carefully about the whole area of Halloween. It's uh, quite an interesting uh, response for us as Christians. And so, um, through the kind of last weeks, we've been reflecting on how we might respond as a church to the sort of Halloween festival. And one of the things we realised, uh, Joe mainly actually, uh, was that what parents love to do is trick-or-treating. That's the key thing. And obviously, um, that's more possible, or was possible, over the kind of last few days uh, because of being outside. So we decided to um, do a pumpkin trail. And Joe's going to tell you what happened yesterday. I'll add to it. Um, but um, next slide will show you what it was. Next one. Yeah, there we go. So we had a really good day. Uh, but before I say anything, I just want to thank publicly everybody who helped yesterday. Um, Izzy did the, the videos, which were absolutely amazing. We had a great lighting team with Dan and Jake and Fee, you know, she stepped up and did all the hot dogs and she also did a craft. So could you just give everybody a clap? Fee, thank you. Um, and it shows how much work went into what happened. Uh, Jo's not mentioning age because today's her birthday and... <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, let's pray. Uh, I'm going to pray the college for all saints. And uh, while I'm praying that, Ernie's going to get ready and he's going to come and lead us in our prayers. So let's pray and uh, begin with the college for this Sunday, all saints. Let us pray. Almighty God, you've knit together your church in one communion and fellowship in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us grace to follow your saints in all their virtuous and godly living, that we may come to the joy of heaven that we, as you have prepared for those who love you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now, this morning... It's a sermon of two halves. Uh, it's not just the one, and in the middle we're going to have a break. Steve's going to do our reading, and then Joe's going to um, lead us in a, a song. And I wanted to talk a little bit in two halves because it's important for us to engage, first of all, with what was last night, Halloween, and also then All Saints, because they go together, night and morning, like night and day. So I want to start with a little bit about Halloween, and actually maybe some jokes to start us off, of course. Why don't mummies take time off? They're afraid to unwind. 
We all know Albert Einstein was a genius, but his brother Frank was a monster. <laughs> now a few about skeletons. We saw someone in a skeleton costume last night. Why don't skeletons ever go trick-or-treating? Because they have no body to go with. <laughs> and what do skeletons order at restaurants? Spare ribs. <laughs> and finally, why don't they play music in skeleton church? No organs. <laughs> All right, well, that's probably enough. <laughs> why talk about Halloween? And as we do, we're going to look at, we go back to the beginning, a little bit of information about that. Because Halloween is now a big festival. In fact, it's the second biggest or highest grossing commercial holiday in the United States, getting in $8 billion. It's a huge industry. And yet, it comes with a lot of baggage. Because in fact, as we mentioned there, there are some quite pagan and mystical roots of Halloween. And we have to see how we respond when it comes to choosing what we do in our approaching this holiday. And that's one of those strange things that people think evil spirits are more kind of, you know, active on Halloween. Well, actually, the truth is evil spirits are no more active or sinister on Halloween than any other day of the year. And in fact, John tells us that greater is he who is in us than he that's in the world and that God has forever disarmed the powers and principalities on the cross through Christ. The particular challenge is for families. And obviously our families are over in the church today, in the orchard rooms today. But I'm going to talk a little bit about this because each family has to really follow their own convictions on this one. And there are different options available for. Some choose not to be involved. 20 years ago, that was probably our view. But now it's become so big and so kind of part of the year that in some ways there needs to be a decision as to how you engage. And it must be the adults within the family who do that, not the children, because it's hard for children to be objective about this. So we decided to provide that pumpkin trail to give an alternative to Halloween and a safe environment where it was around the theme of light and darkness more wholesome. So what do we do with this? Because Christians need to acknowledge that there are some negative aspects to Halloween. We don't glorify all the sort of zombies, horror films, all that stuff which comes along with Halloween. But my view is that we can have a limited and non-compromising participation in it. There's nothing inherently evil about costumes or pumpkins or sweets or even trick-or-treating and going to people's houses. You need to be discerning about this as a Christian. But you can use the symbols as a way of really perhaps enforcing a Christian message. So here's my little thought to end this little section. I did do this earlier. So, this actually Izzy did for the um, Crash Club Children online. So you can watch a much better <laughs> rendition of this from the uh, children's um, thing. So what do we have? This, I used to add, was Joe did this, not me. Um, and it's much better than I could have ever done. Um, and the reason is because basically you can use your pumpkin, which of course um, Joe expertly carved. And what you've got here is your carved pumpkin. And it's got a nice smiley face and a heart. Now, how does it work? Well, let's go to the next slide because there's a lovely way of redeeming this festival. Because often you can have different symbols, not the spooky symbols on the front, but a kind of lovely way of a heart or a cross or different ones there. As an example, this is from America. And they do it in other places in the world as well. But what can you do? Because it's based on a Christian principle. The next slide is actually a verse or two from Ephesians. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. What does that mean, get rid of? Well, I'm going to do this and see how it works. As you can see, you can get out 
All the pips, the rubbish, this kind of stuff from inside your pumpkin. And that's what God does in our lives, isn't it? He takes out those things with our choice. We're involved as well. And God cleans it out so that he can place his light, the light of Christ, in our lives to shine out and cause us to be his disciples. So that's the message in some ways that we were trying to give across in terms of Halloween. It's a simple pumpkin, but we all have pips, don't we? Every form of malice, all those things that we need to get rid of from our lives. So that's just an example of how you can, I don't know if people can see that on the video, wherever it is, but it's a way of actually using this in a way which is different. And I should just add for us here as adults, that it's important that we see clearly that some of the references in Halloween to the occult are not something we want to encourage. And actually, every form of malice may include things that may refer to the occult. Things like Ouija boards, tarot cards, fortune telling and palm reading, astrology, horoscopes, automatic writing, spiritualism, seances, and particularly, obviously, witchcraft and Satanism. Those are the things that need to be emptied out of our lives. And God does that. And if you've got an issue with any of those, do come and speak to me afterwards. Because I think that's an area we need to be clear about on this Halloween festival. However, it's not just getting rid of the old stuff, it's pouring the light of Christ in. And that's where we turn to the whole festival of all saints. And how we are the saints of light. We are those who've been filled with God's light. In fact, the phrase for saints in the New Testament is hagios, which I think from my Greek understanding, but the phrase hagios is literally holy or holy ones. And we are, as his church, the holy ones of God. That's what saints means. It's not just those saints of old who have become saints, Saint Francis of Assisi, but it's Saint Mary in the pew, Saint Karen, Saint Fee, Saint Bruce, Saint Dave. These are all saints, actually. We are God's people. And that's an important truth to make. So that's Halfway House. Steve is going to come and read to us from the uh, book of Revelation. If you have a Bible, you can follow along, but it will appear on the screen. Well done. This is Steve making his way out. And over to you. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength to be, our, to be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Steve. And now you're probably wondering whether or not you can sing these words. So if we go back to the, uh, so there's actually a song put together 
from the two parts, salvation belongs to our God that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb, and praise and glory. And Joe and the band are going to play that song. Salvation belongs to you. And all those things, praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honour, power and strength, all go to you. So we give you the glory today. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, that you are good to us. And we ask now that as we look at 
these verses today, that you would speak to us by your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the whole area of all saints is actually a really interesting one because this picture that we see really answers the question of what our hope and inheritance is in the future as God's people, but also now. We're going to unpack that a little bit as we go along because there are three sections to this reading. And first of all, it's about the people standing in front of the throne, and it's more about what they represent, the symbolism, those things which they are wearing or holding, what's going on. And then finally, it's the Lamb, of course, which is Jesus. And it's a really interesting one, because actually, as you look at these things, it gives us a picture of what it is that is our inheritance. So first of all, the people. And as they stand before the throne, you'll notice two things. One, of course, that you can't count them. There's countless numbers. And if you look back through the history of this perhaps last 2,000 years, you'll know that there have been millions of Christians who followed the way of Christ, right from those early evangelists, as Ernie referred to, but right up till now. And even now, there are billions of Christians in the world. But they are not just British. They are from every nation, tribe, people and language. And this is literally everywhere, all over the world, there are believers. They literally come from everywhere. And it's a picture of heaven, of those who will gather before Jesus. But that area of every nation, tribe, people group and language is important because actually that's the kind of charge of the church to be those ones who take that message across the world to every place. And even now, as I was preaching last week at UCLG on Bible Sunday, the scriptures are being translated into every language They say that by 2038, there will be a portion of scripture in every known language on earth. Which is incredible when you think about it. That every person can read about Jesus. So that's a really important thing. And that we continue as his church to see the gospel go out to every tribe. You know, Joe and I were in Oman. And they're not just Omani Arabs there. There are Belushis and Zanzibaris and those from Salala, Dofaris. They are different tribes, many tribes in that nation. And that's true in other nations as well. And we need to see the gospel go to those tribes that they would be before the throne. So that's the people. What about some of their characteristics? And there are two things here. First of all, they have white robes, don't they? And that's a symbol of holiness, of purity, which is from Jesus. Because as you read later, John says, those robes have been washed in the blood of Jesus. They are white, which represents that kind of holiness that we gain from God. Not of our own, but of His holiness. And they're holding palm branches. You'll see in the picture, that's what's going on. It reminds you of that entry into Jerusalem, Palm Sunday, isn't it? When they picked up palm branches to wave. It's a symbol of worship, isn't it? It's about how they are adoring God, standing before Him. And it's a reminder of what they did for Jesus when He entered the city. And then, of course, the song comes. And we've heard it, haven't we, in what was sung for us today. And there's so much in that, but it's the simple truth that salvation belongs to God, who sits on the throne. And it's not just people, it's all of creation, those elders. The elders are a representation of leadership. If you look back, you'll see there's 144,000, the perfect number, 
12,000 times 12,000 based upon their understanding that 12 tribes of Israel were the perfect number. And these are the elders, both angelic and human. As with the whole of creation, it's not just people, leaders, great and small, but actually all of creation worships God. The living creatures, they're a kind of composite with wings and different bits of animals together. And they're a representation, a symbol of all of creation worshipping God. This is the great song of heaven that we sang. Beautiful. But it's not just about worship, it's also about the hard times. And they've come through this tribulation, which is a symbol of trials and testing. And really, we know a bit about that right now. It's not just, obviously, our situation with COVID, which is a struggle and a test. It's difficult, and we'll again be locked down for another four weeks from next Sunday. But we'll return again in December, and we'll celebrate Christmas as we can. And we keep going. We get through this tribulation. But actually, it's not just here. It's over in France at the moment, as many of you know. Tax on churches, on a priest. And that's just one place, other parts of the world, where this happens regularly. And this was written to people under siege under persecution. If you read back through the seven churches in Revelation, they're all from different places across Asia Minor and the Mediterranean, and they were places where it was difficult to be a Christian. It was hard, and they were under persecution, both physical and in many other ways. It's not easy being a Christian at times, and the struggle is for us to remain faithful. God is faithful. He will see us through trials and tribulations. But, as we come to the end of this amazing song, it gives us a picture of what we, as God's people, will actually find ourselves doing before the throne of God. We serve God day and night, it says, before his throne. But all those things that then follow are examples of what God is doing for us now. Because this is for now. It's our hope for the future, not just at the end of time. It's now. So what does God do for us now? He, in all those things, specifically does that sense of, first of all, shelter, protection. They're sheltered by the presence of God. He gives us protection. He also provides for us. There is no hunger, no thirst in that place. And he does that now. He provides what we need to get through this next stage of our lives. They are cared for, they are shepherded. And we've talked about that so many times here, about the Lord as our shepherd. We shall not want. He is with us. He's faithful. And then there is perhaps that sense of loss and pain. We will be comforted. All tears wiped away. And we think of those who are grieving, who've lost loved ones recently. There are people in our own community who we've lost, and we grieve their loss. And even tonight, if you are specifically in need of a time to remember a loved one you've lost, either recently or going back, you can do that. There'll be a service over at UCLG, 6 o'clock tonight, All Souls service, where you will remember those local saints, if you like, who we've lost this last year or so, and their people will gather, and there will be a service to remember them. So there is comfort for us, and we are ultimately led to springs of water, which is a symbol of life. We have life in Jesus. He is the one. It's the Lamb who leads them to springs of water. So what's the message for today? What is it all about, this All Saints stuff? Well, it's we as God's people have a glorious inheritance. This is a picture of what is to come for us as God's people. It's an amazing inheritance. But it's not just that. It's hope for now. Now in our lives, in this time of COVID. We feel a bit under siege, don't we? We feel as though things are difficult. But these words were written to encourage a church at that time, 
Be encouraged by these words. God is still with us. He is faithful. He will take us through and we can trust him. Times may be hard, but we hope in God's good purpose. We hope in the Lamb, the one who leads us to springs of water. He is with us. So let's pray as we close our time together. And as we just take a moment to receive his love and presence. Let's just open up our hearts to God. Allow his spirit to meet us here today and give us grace and strength for the next month. As we begin this month of lockdown, we need your help. us with your strength. Thank you, Lord. We receive from you what we need. Thank you, Lord. Whatever it is you need today, his strength, his peace, hope, his love, reach out. He's there.